Hi guys, hi family, hi friends. This is Dr. T and welcome to Clinical Medicine with Dr. T. So guys, in this video I just want us to to quickly compare neuromuscular blockers. Um, neuromuscular blockers. We know that we've got dipolar rising and we've got non depolarizing right and we know that and we know that under non under depolarizing we've got only one drug there that drug is is saxmethonium Saxmethonium. I'm not gonna mention the other um, neuromuscular blockers, the non depolarizing, because there are so many. But whatever that, whatever that, I, that I'm gonna say is gonna apply to all of them. So I'm gonna leave them like that. So let's first compare Saxmethonium and Acetylcholine. Acetylcholine. I want to show you something there, like very important. It's going to help you to understand a lot of things. So, saxmethonium, as we know, that is a drug. We don't have it naturally, but it's a drug that has got two molecules. Two molecules of acetylcholine. So saxmethonium is made up of two molecules of acetylcholine, while acetylcholine has got only one molecule of itself. Molecule. So let's talk about sax first. So uh, sorry, let's talk about acetylcholine first. Acetylcholine, as we know that it's natural, and we know that. Please watch my video where I cover the basic physiology around this. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get into details. Uh, in this video. So, we know that uh, in, an impulse is transmitted, is generated and transmitted uh, down the exon to the end bulb. And when it gets here, it causes um. An influx of um, calcium channels, and then, and uh, vesicles they end up being exocytosed with with uh, acetylcholine. Then acetylcholine will diffuse across the synaptic cleft and to its receptors, which are the nicotinic in this case, nicotinic receptors so it's gonna come and bind here on the active site of the of the the nicotinic receptor when that happens sodium channels they are gonna open and sodium is gonna start getting inside this um, muscle when sodium starts getting inside the inside of the cell becomes more positive and that is called depolarization depolarization so as sodium keeps going inside the cell or the muscle the inside becomes more positive now the body says to itself, okay, in order for us to get back to being negative inside, remember, when cells are resting, the inside is more negative than the outside. So now, when you start having a lot of cat ions, which are positively charged ions, 
once we've got a lot once you get a lot of them coming inside they make the inside of the cell the intracellular now to be more positive now so the body will try and reverse all of this by kicking out potassium right this is fine it's normal it should happen now acetylcholine will diffuse from its receptors and will be broken down or metabolized will be broken down by an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase this enzyme breaks down acetylcholine into choline and acetic acid right acetic acid guys please bear with me i'm gonna show you something that you'll never forget and it will make it easy for you wherever you go and also going forward so it's gonna break it down to choline and acetic acid that's that enzyme please remember this enzyme acetylcholinesterase right now when when sodium channels they open because of the stimulus um from the receptors when they open sodium starts to go in and potassium starts to to be kicked out now you don't get hyperkalemia even though sodium even though potassium is kicked out but you don't get hyperkalemia because this enzyme makes the effects of acetylcholine to be very brief very brief milli milliseconds so that's why with acetylcholine you cannot appreciate a, pot a hyperkalemia because this whole thing before you can develop hyperkalemia this whole thing is already reversed because um because the acetylcholine stops stimulating the receptor because it's broken down so its effects are not prolonged so the cycle just keeps going back keeps happening going back keeps happening and all of that now let's get to our other friend sax sax methonium has got two molecules of acetylcholine and because of that it's not surprising that sax will also sit on the very same position on the receptor that acetylcholine also sits on those nicotinic receptors right nicotinic receptors so sax methonium will be given will come in and sit on the receptors as well exactly where acetylcholine would sit um let's go back to uh to biochemistry a bit let's just visit there when you've got um let's say you've got um, a receptor like this When you have a receptor like that, and then let's say this is a, an active site of that receptor, this is an inactive site of that receptor. When, when a molecule comes and sits on the active site of the receptor, and because of that, 
that's, that receptor becomes stimulated, that substance, okay, let's say substance A, whatever substance A is, substance A comes and sit on this receptor, on the active site of this receptor. And because of that, the, the, the receptor is stimulated. Substance A is called an agonist. If substance B, substance B comes and sits on the active site of the receptor but does not stimulate the receptor substance b is called a competitive antagonist 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 substance a comes and sits on the receptor on the active site of the receptor and the receptor is stimulated substance a is an agon is an agonist substance b comes and sits on the active site of the receptor but does not um, exert any effect so the receptor is not stimulated substance b is a competitive antagonist so substance b is competing with substance A but is not causing any effect. I hope you guys get that. I hope you guys get that because <laughs> this is what neuromus non depolarizing depolarizing neuromuscular blockers do. They are comp competitive antagonists. And then Okay, so if we have substance C, substance C comes in and sits on the inactive site, but is able to render the, 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 the receptor useless or to make the, the, the receptor not to be to be stimulated so substance C is um, is called an an allosteric allosteric inhibitor or an allosteric antagonist I'm gonna repeat this I'm saying guys we have a receptor this receptor has got an active site and an inactive site now if we have a substance and subst and that substance comes and sits on the or a molecule comes and sits on the active site of this of this receptor and is able to produce effect or is able to to have effect or to stimulate this receptor then substance a is a is an agonist but if we have substance c i mean substance b and substance b also sits on the active site but does not produce effect or does not exert effect then substance b is a competitive antagonist Substance C is a molecule that sits not on the active site but on the inactive site, but is able to make them the to, to sort of like switch off the the, the the receptor. It's that's called an allosteric inhibitor or an or an allost, uh, or an allosteric antagonist. How does that happen? It's like a, an enzyme. Um, so, if substance, um, let's say, how am I going to put this? 
Okay, basically, when substance C comes and sits here, that causes a conformational change of the active site. And if there's a conformational change, it means the substances that are that usually sits there cannot sit because the structure has been altered. So that's how substance C can sort of like switch off the receptor. So guys, these are very important. That's what I wanted to say. I'm going to wrap that off so then we can continue nicely. So we are back here, guys, with sax. So sax methodium has got two molecules of acycholine. And when given, it comes and binds or sits on the active site of the nicotinic receptor. Because it's sitting on the active site of the nicotinic receptor, it stimulates these, uh, these receptors and then sodium channels open and sodium starts to come inside. Sodium starts to come inside. Right? Sodium starts to come inside. And then depolarization occurs. Now, methionium doesn't want to let go of the nicotinic receptors. So, methionium has got prolonged effects. So, it sits for longer on the receptor. So, the depolarization is prolonged. And we know that when sodium comes inside, a potassium has got to be kicked outside. So even that becomes prolonged. So the depolarization is prolonged. The depolarization is prolonged. Meaning the influx of sodium is prolonged and the, in the efflux of potassium is also prolonged. This is how you get hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia with sax methionium. Guys, if there's a there is one um there is one side effect of sax methionium that you must know is hyperkalemia. That's why I'm explaining it so that you don't forget it. So this is how you get hyperkalemia. Now look at the difference. The difference between acetylcholine and saxmethonium is that they do the, the same thing but the difference is that acetylcholine sits on the receptors for a brief moment so the hyperkalemia that it causes does not become clinically apparent or is not uh, appreciated or is not even seen because it's very brief and the reason why acetylcholine sits on the surface for a brief moment is because it's broken down by acylcholinesterase very fast to its inactive metabolites that's the reason but the problem with sax is that sax sits there for a longer period because in the synaptic cleft there is no enzyme that breaks down sax methionium sax methionium is only broken down by a, an enzyme called plasma pseudocholinesterase this enzyme is not found in the cleft so basically sax methionium sits on the receptors for a long time when it thinks that now i'm okay it starts to leave by diffusion according to the Con for according to its concentration gradient it moves away by itself away from the synaptic cleft and that's when it's broken down but it sits for a very long time on receptors so that's what is very very important to, to, to remember so it's very important to know that it's very important to know that acetylcholine is broken down by acylcholinesterase and Sax is broken down by plasma pseudocholinesterase and that it causes hyperkalemia because it 
system it hyper stimulates the receptors for a longer period and hyperkalemia results the, depol the depolarization that it causes is very deep and is very uh, uh, significant compared to acetylcholine right hope you guys you got that okay um so, so plasma pseudocholesterol is is, is 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 produced by the liver it's very important um yeah okay guys now that we got that let's talk about a non depolarizing so uh, now we can appreciate that both sats and um ac uh, acetylcholine those are both they are they are agonists they are both agonists and we have defined what an agonist is it's a molecule that sits on the receptor and produces effects or stimulate the receptor so both of them they dis, they do stimulate this they, they do stimulate the nicotinic receptors now let's talk about this is very important because now things changes when we get to non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers so the non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers we don't have them uh, naturally we don't produce them naturally um, but they are given as drugs so we have our receptors there and then a drug has been given doesn't matter which drug is it it can be MIVA it can be rock it can be penteronium or it, whatever whatever non depolarizing depolarizing you know mass blocker it is so it comes and sits there on the receptors it sits on the on the active side of the receptor remember these they also sit on the active side on the active side of the nicotinic receptors the difference is that these ones they sit on the active site of the receptor and stimulate it but this guy or these guys they sit on the active receptor on the active site on the nicotinic receptor but they do not produce any effect they just sit there for the eat <laughs> okay so because these uh, neuromuscular blockers they sit on the active site but they don't produce effect they are called competitive they are competing because okay they, they are competitive competitive antagonist Remember, if you are not going to stimulate a receptor, then you become an antagonist. But if you are going to stimulate it, you become an agonist. So they don't, so they are antagonist. But the word competitive comes in because they sit on the exactly, exactly the same spot where acetylcholine is supposed to be sitting. So when they sit there, they are just blocking it. Acetylcholine is going to come in, it's going to be released, but will not have a place to sit because the receptor is already occupied so as a is going to just wander around until it's broken down as long as the non-depolarizing agents are still sitting there then acetylcholine does not have a chance to go and sit there on that active side so this is how they, this is how these work right this is how these work so as long as nicotinic receptors are not stimulated then no sodium channel is going to be opened right no stimulation no sodium channel that opens therefore no influx of sodium and if there is no influx of sodium then there is no 
efflux of potassium then you can't have hyperkalemia that's why when you talk about depolarizing and non-depolarizing one of the major differences in terms of the side effects is the fact that non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers do not cause hyperkalemia because they don't cause depolarization remember we said that because there is no stimulus coming in then the sodium channels will not open and if the sodium channels do not open then it means depolarization is not going to happen there is no depolarization this phrase non-depolarizing comes in because of that right so there won't be hyperkalemia there will never be hyperkalemia with these drugs because of that now that non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker let's say recurring rotorium is just sitting there not stimulating the receptor it's just sitting there and enjoying i made a silly example and i said when i was doing this before but this is a, this is a better tutorial i said non-depolarizing neuromuscular, neuromuscular blockers are like you can picture them like this there is this girl that you are interested in this is you you are interested in this girl but this girl has got a friend whether it's a female or male but it's got a friend when this friend is not in the picture you guys are the best of friends or the best of partners but once this friend comes then the two of you you cannot enjoy your moments you can't be together because of the presence so the presence of this makes it impossible for you to even get close to this so this would be our nicotinic receptor this would be our acetylcholine this would be our um non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker you know this friend just occupies enjoys being in the presence of this girl but there's no relationship they are not planning to have kids they're not planning to have whatever they're not planning to have cars together they're not planning a future together and then, but at the same time you can't come in even though there are no future plans here you can't come in this one enjoys just being in the presence of this uh, lady but there are no plans <laughs> so yeah guys um think of it like that um there's something that i have in my mind okay this is what i wanted to say now let's talk about reversal this is natural there's nothing to reverse here nature corrects itself but now this guy sax methonium one thing that is very important with sax that we must all know is that it takes about 30 to 60 seconds to work that's why it's chosen as a muscle resident of choice when it comes to rapid sequence induction some say it takes about 45 minutes to 60 i mean 45 seconds to 60 seconds to start working and the duration is under 10 minutes the problem with sucks is that if you have given it you have given it you don't have a reversal so there is nothing there's no such thing as sax methonium reversal so we don't have a reversal there so let's talk about non depolarizing uh, neuromuscular blockers because they do have a reversal reversal let's talk about that in another video <laughs>